So how are you doing this week? Doing all right. It's rainy and cold and gross here, and that's pretty sad. It's snowing here. Oh. There's snow and shit. We got, like, some flurries yesterday, but nothing stuck. It's not cold enough to stick yet, but it's cold enough that white stuff is falling from the sky. Fortunately, that white stuff is snow. Because if it wasn't, then we would be worried. Well, then we'd be in a really fucked up anime, I guess. Probably. So I, I, I am a southern transplant at this point. I'm living in the upper Midwest, which I don't understand why it's called. Isn't it the Mid-North? It's midway to the West. Yeah, but it's the north, the mid. Well, I think Midwest. I think like Kansas and shit. That's in the fucking middle. Well, you kind of are in the fucking middle. You border a great lake. But I'm above anyway. You're I'm, in the middle. If you're you, midway to the west. If you've ever lived in the south during any sort of inclement weather of a winter persuasion, it is kind of hilarious because up here. They'll get like six fucking feet of snow where you are literally stuck in your building and you have to chisel your way out. And driving is just, and they're like, eh, it's no big deal. No yeah. one, you still I'm gonna have. Be, I'm going to be half an hour late for work, sorry. Yeah, you still got to go to work. You still got to go to school. Shit, just keep, down in the south, if like three flakes of frozen material hit the ground. Oh my God! Oh no! Oh! Everyone loses their mind. Don't drive. You'll crash into things. Do you know what's funny? I have only ever lived in New York and Connecticut, where it snows all the time. It snow is a regular event. We get, you know, major snowstorms all winter. And people still act like that. Like, if there's an inch of snow, my nephew doesn't have school. And I'm like, it's fucking New York. You know how many times this year there's going to be an inch of snow? A lot. And people forget how to drive, and it's and it's they act like, and then all the bread and milk is gone. I because know, it's... Never, because if there's fucking two inches of snow on the ground, you are never leaving the house again. Just get like twenty loaves. And We're staying until like, spring. It's gonna be awful. It's all gonna be plowed by tomorrow. It, this is fucking New England. Like, and then then you have a freezer full of loaves of bread, and you're like, God, I was an idiot. I don't understand it. I don't understand why people like they forget where they live. It's like, this is going to happen a few more times, guys. At least in the South, they kind of have the excuse where it's a little bit of an unusual event. It's becoming a more usual event, but... I'm learning a bit about how things are in the South because I'm totally dating a Southern hick now. He thinks he's not a Southern hick because he's from Missouri. But... You've been interacting with me for, like, years, and I'm so from the South, and it just... That now it's it's becoming a thing for you? Well, it's increased exposure. You know. He talks to me about grits, and I've never had grits, and he finds that really upsetting. He showed up wearing cowboy boots. Okay, dude, I'm from South Carolina, and even that's, like, too much. Too he much. showed up to take me to an Afghan week show in New York City wearing cowboy boots, and I'm like, no. Really? Walker, Texas Ranger? No, too much. He's gonna be so. Everybody bad. acts like grits are a bad, are like this big, I big deal. Like it's just ground up corn. You're done. I've never had them. I mean, I'm sure they're lovely. I, no, they're not actually. All right, they're like huge granules that that are in this sort of like a buttery kind of sauce, and they're the blandest fucking thing. And everybody's like, grits are amazing. They're not. They kind of. I should tell you that I'm, I mean, I'm the daughter of an Irish farmer. And my dad made the best fucking oatmeal in the world. I like oatmeal that you could fucking put bricks together with. Like thick, pasty, lumpy oatmeal grits with butter not, and sugar. Grits are not That's that That's the good shit. All right. So this week, we have long asked what causes all of this shit. And I've got a brief story to start us off with, but first let's get the uh, get the intro here. All right. 
I'm in so much trouble right now over that Walker Texas Ranger joke. He is not, he's not amused. That's the wrong thing I'm playing. That's that's even better. Where are you? Where where are you? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Files, who can't answer me. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs to fight all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And that is our question. That is the question of the show. What the fuck is wrong with you? That is the question that is posed for every single episode, the hundreds of episodes I have done of this, the years I have done this. It's always been what the fuck is wrong with you? And now science, science may have the answer. At long last, we may know for really for reals now from whence this all comes. Really? I'm trying to fix my camera because they're complaining that my camera keeps changing. Well, it's not you. It's your bandwidth. Don't worry about it. Fuck oh, them. Right. Fuck them with the can't take about it. New stupidity virus discovered. Oh my god, is it contagious? Next time you lose your keys or bomb the test, try blaming it on a virus. Researchers from Johns Hopkins University and University of Nebraska have discovered a virus that makes you just a little bit dumber. Scientists stumbled upon the previously unknown, quote, stupidity virus in the throat cultures of healthy subjects during a completely unrelated experiment. The 44% of people who tested positive for the virus performed seven to nine points lower on IQ tests that measured attention span and how fast and accurately people process visual information. Wow. When the Nebraska researchers injected the virus into the digestive system of mice, same thing. The rod rodents blundered around mazes, par appeared flummoxed by new toys, and seemed oblivious to entryways in and out of their cages. In short, they acted a tiny bit stupider than the average mouse. So yes, you can infect someone with stupidity. You literally can get someone else's stupid on you and it will make you dumber. That explains so much of my dating history. What, you've gotten stupid from people? Yeah. Oh yeah. This will be the virus that ends the world. Forget the zombie plague. Forget Ebola. Forget any of the horror movie plagues. Forget 28 Days Later. This will be the virus that ends the world. The world will go down in a wave of contagious fucking idiocy. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. And you guys are like seven to nine IQ points. That's not a big Dude, okay? Oh, seven to nine IQ points. That's a big deal. I'm like in the mid 30s. You take me down in the mid-20s. You're still okay. Take me down like nine. But, but if you're like somewhere around like 100 or so, you're in the average. You take that down about 10. You're going to put your shoes in a toaster. Nash. What? Someday they're going to study our show. To find, to trace the trail of the virus. Yes. Like the CDC pouring over my archives going, we have to find patient zero. Where is he? We're doing well, apparently really... he's in Florida somewhere, sir. We're doing really important work. We are. We're tracking the decline. Oh. We're a living record. I want my government check then. They're going to build statues of us in bronze. Ah. Uh. Well, and then people will draw dicks on them. Well, you know what? No, to be fair, I don't care how you stupid you are or smart you are. Drawing dicks on things is hilarious. Yeah, but I don't want a dick drawn on me. I'm a girl. What, you've never gotten drunk and woken up with a dick drawn on your face? I have not. You That's never happened to me. You need to go to better parties. Well, part of it is I have a policy against falling asleep drunk because if I fall asleep still drunk, I wake up and puke. Eh. So the only way for me not to get sick is to stay awake until I'm sober. So I don't fall asleep drunk because that equals projectile vomit. Little thing you didn't know about me. And now the entire internet knows. If I'm ever at your party, don't let me fall asleep drunk or I'm going to ruin your carpet. I did it to my ex-husband. 
So, uh, you believe in ghosts? Yes. I don't. Okay. But I have the feeling that were this to happen to me, I would be rethinking some shit. I feel so bad for the people at this department store. Colorado man gets stuck in Marshall's department store wall for three days. Oh, my God. How man, does that happen? Man being investigated for burglary. A Colorado man was pulled to safety on Tuesday after, re after rescuers cut through the wall of a department store where he had been trapped for three days after plunging from the building's roof. Paul Felick, Felick? Paul Felick, uh, 35, was rescued between the walls of a Marshall store in Longmont, about 50 kilometers north of Denver. Uh, Felick suffered injuries to his lower extremities and remains hospitalized, where he's also being treated for dehydration. Cage said, adding that he will likely face criminal charges when he recovers. He has not been arrested. We are investigating him for attempted burglary. Here's the fucked up part, as if it wasn't bad enough. Cage said police were called to the store on Monday after workers reported hearing noises around the building. The responding officer did not find anything after police stepped up patrols in the area because it is adjacent to an area frequented by transients. Uh, transients. Uh, Longmont Fire Department spokesman uh, Molly Meehan said store employees called authorities again on Tuesday to report they heard a man yelling inside the building but could not locate the source. I would quit that job immediately. How creepy would that shit be? I'd be like, nope. <laughs> Do this. When Clive Owen did this in Inside Man, he packed a go bag. He even dug a hole to poop in. Second thing, I have some experience with this. Well, my family does. This should surprise you none. My sister used to have this cat named Seamus, who we nicknamed Shamu, because this was an enormous cat. This was like a 20-something pound cat. Like, he was a big, fat cat, and he was lovely. He was very sweet. So he was a whole Chinese buffet all by himself. Oh, he was a big cat. At my parents' house, the paneling in my old room pulled up from the wall in one spot. Seamus was very shy. He didn't like people. So he used to hide behind the paneling. Well, at some point, he got in behind the paneling and went in too far and got like trapped in the walls of the house. Oh shit. He was in there for like 12 hours because the more we tried to coax him out, the more scared he would get and the further in he would go. It turned into fucking house of leaves. Like <laughs> we couldn't coax the cat out of the walls. And like, we were all sitting in the kitchen and we just heard this thump because the cat like fell onto the kitchen ceiling. <laughs> This enormous cat. So we had to call the fire department. My dad was a fireman. So the firemen all came and tried to coax the cat out of the walls. The cat was not coming out for the fireman because he was scared. So my sister, the only person the cat would come to, had to crawl into the walls to retrieve her big old fat cat. Okay. Now, imagine, was okay. now instead of a cat, imagine it was a 35-year-old man. That would have been creepier. <laughs> And less cute, for sure. It's, I would, if, I just imagine shoppers in that mall, in, in that department store, be freaking the fuck out. Lady in the going into the changing room, trying some shit on. Run me out of here! Just get the fuck. Just... <laughs> be like um, Joey Lauren Adams in Mall Rats, thinking somebody is trying to get a peep. Just Jesus fuck that that apparently he for three days in the walls of the fucking May, uh, Mar Marshall's department store and unable to get help. Like, and you, you know the absolute worst part? Three days trapped, unable to escape the Muzak. Yeah. Yeah. That way madness lies. From start to finish, you're, and you know they're playing the Christmas shit already. It's like, can you imagine the smell if they hadn't gotten him out? <laughs> like, have you ever had a mouse die in the walls? I have of the not. place where you live? I have not, no. That's smell. Because especially in the winter when the heat's on, oh my God, like baked dead mouse, not a good smell. Baked dead human? Well, it would kind of smell a little like pork. Like barbecue. 
I don't know that that would be terribly pleasant at the Probably not. Probably not. So, we keep automating so much shit. We automate, like, uh, we have Google working on a self-driving car. And our phones, if, here's a fun, if your friend gets a Nexus 6, here's a fun trick to play on them. The Nexus 6 has a, a search feature on it. This is a Nexus 5. There's a reason I got a Nexus 5 instead of a Nexus 6. Nexus 6 has a uh, search feature on it called OK Google. Right. Did you see what just happened? Yeah, they run ads for it all the time. Try this again. OK Google, where am I? Here's a map of See? It, it, you know, it tells you shit. So, you know you just told everybody where you live. I know. You've been rocking this Shermer, Illinois thing for a while. I'm still in Shermer. It's an outskirt. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, this, this, it, it, you say, OK, Google. Right. And it does whatever you say. Yeah, I've seen those ad, the ads for it. Of course, it just says, I think I said Eddie does whatever you say, so, which is funny. If your friend, however, with this, if I push the power button, OK, Google, doesn't work anymore. Not the Nexus 6. Really? It's always on and always listening. That's a bad idea. Yes. So if you, any of your friends own a Nexus 6, just, okay, Google, search for donkey porn. Why would they do that? Because they think it's convenient. I can't think of a feature on my phone I would want to use when the phone isn't active. Because that's the point of the phone being active. But what I'm saying is we're automating so many things and now my Microsoft... robots are fucking taking over. And you all, all you people who laughed at me about being afraid of the robots, give it 10 fucking years and you're going to be knocking on my door for protection. Um, because I was ready. You're too late. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You don't know what I've got in the basement. Microsoft hires Dalek-style Robocops to guard Silicon Valley headquarters. That looks like an R2-D2 butt plug. <laughs> Computing, what giant, it does, though? Computing giant Microsoft is one of these Silicon Valley companies that has hired robot security guards to protect and serve the streets around Northern California's technology hub. The Nightscope K5 robot security guards are fitted with lasers, GPS, and heat detecting technology and can predict where criminals will strike next and the future likelihood of future crimes. The five foot tall robots are designed to operate without hu human control and are equipped with surveillance cameras and sensors, a thermal imaging system, scanners that can read 300 car registration plates a minute, and odor detectors. It patrols the streets using lasers to gauge distance and a GPS system. Robots analyze information from government, business, and local uh, social media sources to predict the likelihood of a crime being committed in a given area and decide it scans Twitter. It scans Twitter and decides whether the alert whether to alert authorities if it comes across anything suspicious. Four of the robot security guards have been deployed to guard Microsoft Silicon Valley campus in the system's first real mission. Here's the first problem. What do the lasers do? It, they show it, it, it uses the laser kind of like a bat uses sonar. Oh, it bounces okay. the light off things. So it can't like fire lasers. No, no, no. It's not going to like okay. melt your face. Although you never know. They could, that might be a bug. Um, so the first problem is they're doing this at Microsoft's campus. This is a very stupid idea. Because... The likelihood of that operating system being based on some sort of Microsoft code and the fact that you're surrounded by Microsoft employees who are, you know, most coders and programmers and folks are non-conventional people. Yeah. All they have to do is go over to Robbie the Robot here with a flash disk and we're going to have some comedy. They're going to have this, they're, they're going to fucking reprogram this thing to start dancing and shit. Well, it can't dance. It's a butt plug. Actually, you bring up a fun point. Um, 
Uh, I noticed uh, Rachel Metz, reporter for the MIT Technology Review, said, quote, I noticed that a K-5 in the distance had somehow toppled over the ledge of the sidewalk onto the parking lot asphalt several inches below, not feet. It went over several inches and fell the fuck over. A couple, you couldn't work stairs, man. A couple of night scope folks were needed to pull it upright. You gotta give these things fucking legs. Yeah, or treads. Tread mount that fucker. Fine. Like, you can't just throw wheels on it. That's... This is what I mean when I... I have this thing that, like, if I were in charge, someday when I'm the overlord, there will be a required syllabus of sci-fi that anyone who wants a scientific grant will be required to consume before they can even ask for any money. You gotta see fucking Terminator... You gotta see, like, iRobot, Jurassic Park. You, like, all the fucking sci-fi where some shit ball scientist makes the world go boom. All of it. You gotta see all of it. You have to read pretty much all the William Gibson. Otherwise, you can't even ask me for any money. The answer will be no. I guess we gotta add Star Wars to the list so that you know that you can't build a robot that just goes on fucking bicycle wheels. You know what I'm sitting here thinking? It's not going to work. This is some massive dynamic shit here. This is like something Walter Bishop would make. Massive dynamic would have given it fucking legs. (laughs) Massive dynamic was smarter than this. Uh, Massive dynamic would have made a fucking cyborg that looked just like a regular person, but their eyes glowed kind of funny blue, and you would have never known the difference until they snapped your neck. This thing is... Not in the slightest bit intimidating. All right, just just look at this fucking thing. Someone said something about this being the start of, start of Skynet. Great Britain a couple years ago actually started a program where the tech could talk to each other. They called it Skynet. The end is nigh. Why would you do that? You didn't know about that. No. Why the fuck would you do? Yeah, they started a program for like all the military tech to talk to each other, and they actually fucking called it Skynet. And That's, I'm like, why don't you is... just laugh at the gods? That is some tempting fate shit right there. Why don't you just like run out to the highest mountaintop and be like, come and fucking get me. (laughs) Okay. Quite often on this show, we normally focus on the misadventures, mishaps, and just horror. That is the human condition. However, sometimes this does indeed spread outside of our species um, do you remember the the uh, the alcoholic warthog we had? The 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 pig that drank all the beer. Yes. Yeah. The al- I I have a special place in my heart for Hemingway Bear. Well, of the drunken animals, Hemingway Bear is my favorite. This is, I think, without question, the first time we can look and say at an animal and say, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Without question, without reservation, without hesitation, because seals discovered having sex with penguins. Things are heating up in the cold climbs of the sub-Antarctic on a remote... Warning, you may find the videos in this story disturbing. So we're going to play them. Um, Let me read... You know what? It gets better if if I read you the story... Oh my god, look at the screen again. While I play you the video. Here, just watch this in the background. I don't while I read it. you. Uh, I don't want to watch specifically, it. Specifically, they have try, been trying to have sex with penguins. More than, one, more than one first seal has been caught in the act on more than one occasion. And it's been captured on film with details being published. <laughs> in the journal Polar Biograph- Biology. Sexual behavior of the fur seals hasn't come as a complete shock to scientists. 2006 with the fur... Oh, God, it's just impossible. It's impossible to read this. (laughs) Oh, my God. Ah. New incidents published the study multiple occurrences of the king penguin sexual harassment. I love they call it sexual harassment. 
by Antarctic <laughs> fur seals. Um, Man, Madagascar took a dark turn. Right? <laughs> Un they gave the penguins their own movie, and I was like, oh, cool, that's going to be funny. On three separate occasions, a research team led by William H. Haddad and, uh, had spotted young males, young male seals sexually coercing what appeared to be healthy penguins of unknown gender. So they're not even picking. They don't care, male or female, they're going to fuck it. This is what happens when you let the seals hang out with dolphins. All four known sexual incidents followed a common pattern. Each time a seal chased, captured, and mounted the penguin. The seal then attempted copulation several times, lasting about five minutes each, with periods of rest in between. Are these all at the same place? <laughs> yep, same island. Okay, so this isn't just a random phenomenon, because no. that would be fucking terrifying. That would be... So this is just some kind of fucked up seal frat. Retro K238. This is not how Happy Feet goes. This is not Happy Feet. Did this you is hear not the joke Happy about the Feet. Seven, the Seven Dwarves going to the Vatican? No. Okay, so the Seven Dwarves go to the Vatican and they request an audience with the Pope. Stay with me. Just get on this ride with me. And they request an audience with the Pope. And when they when they see the Pope, they ask the Pope, Pope, are there any are there any dwarf nuns in the Vatican? The Pope says, No, no, there aren't. All of our nuns are normal heighted people. And they say, Are there any dwarf nuns in Rome at all? Not that I know of, no. Are there any dwarf nuns in all of Italy? No, no, I don't think they are. Don't be fucked a penguin. Don't be fucked a penguin. I told you it was going to be relevant. You just had to it stay was. It was relevant. Oh my god! What in the fucking just? What is going on? It's all coming down, man. I know. This is, speaking of massive dynamic and the pattern. The animals are like, look, the machines are taking over. Smoke them if you got them. I'm willing to bet, yeah, a guy uh, went through a wall into a bank, through a solid wall without cutting through it, and uh, this other Maybe guy... Maybe that's what happened to the Marshalls guy. This, this other guy over here... Maybe he, uh, he, like, phased in and couldn't phase back out. And they used this giant slug that, that was actually the common cold virus. Oh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> seals are fucking penguins. Yeah, they kind of, like, shifted past that one on Fringe. They didn't talk about that part of the pattern. The seals fucking the penguins. Maybe that's how that guy got in the Marshall's wall. Do we want to see it again, everybody? No. There's, there's another. Oh, there are two videos. No. Okay, there's a different. Let's look at the first one here. I don't want to watch little penguins get raped ever. Well, I don't think there's any penetration going on. I think they're it just being matter. held down and all. Oh, God, look at the penguins. Like, get the fuck off me. It doesn't matter. And his friends are just standing around and laughing at him. Well, what are they going to do? Oh God! Get get off me! Get the fuck off! <laughs> this is very upsetting to me. I don't like it. Why is this happening? What the fuck is wrong with the seals? <laughs> what the fuck? Of course, she realized what's going to happen. We're going to go back there in twenty years. There's going to be seals with feathers. And penguins with flippers. Well, they already have flippers. No, but they're going to have more. <laughs> we still have more, kids. Oh, God, it gets worse. Um, I don't think I can do anymore. <laughs> so, um, have have I am not a big fan of plastic surgery. I think it's it's it's. It, dangerous and the trade-offs are not worth it i it's it just it's the whole idea of re-sculpting your biology to suit someone else's whims strikes me as just bad on so many levels but we've just we found a way of making it worse we've taken our you know how you get a smartphone and you're expecting two years to throw it away and get a new smartphone 
we've taken this culture of uh, planned obsolescence a little too fucking far. Oh, I saw this. I don't understand why you would want this. Temporary vacation breasts may be here by 2016. Offering women the ability to test drive breast implants, first led plastic surgeon Norman Rowe to invent the Insta Breasts. A quote. Let me just interrupt and tell you that I had this for Halloween. It cost me $30 and it was a super duper push up rock. No surgery. It's, quote, a lunchtime lift offering instant breast enlargement that lasts 24 hours. Now, he's hard at work on vacation breast. The New York City doctor expects this new augmentation will last two to three weeks, uh, which would work out for vacation or special occasion. Bro, is it revealing the chemical makeup that would be injected into patients? Can you imagine, like, you get these for the first date? First date goes better than you expected. And, you know, you're back at this guy's place and they just deflate. It's like Cinderella, only your tits. Yeah. You have to get home before midnight or your tits disappear. You have to get back before your tits turn from pumpkins into pancakes. It's, it's, it's a saline solution with an additive that's already used in medical circles for other reasons. Although Roe is able to increase women's breast size a whole, cu- a whole cup to a cup and a half using the InstaBreast procedure, he wanted to prolong the experience. Seriously, they make bras that do this. They do. Ladies. Do you seriously... They make those chicken cutlet things you stuff into the super bra. Do you seriously want anything to do with a guy... Who would only be interested if you take a needle, put it in your tit, and use it to increase your cup size temporarily. God knows how this much would cost. I guarantee goddamn to you, Obamacare will not cover this shit. This is the kind of person you want because your tits are going to go away. Like two, three weeks. You're going to keep going back in. Are we going to have like track marks on people's tits? From keeping injecting new tits. Where does it go after 24 hours? I, I think your, 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 it's a, it, your system processes the chemical. So that basically, you're inducing seem, swelling. It doesn't seem safe. And this is fun for you? I can't, can't imagine who, who would... This is not fun. <clears throat> This, this is, don't, Lemon, don't do this. You don't really, you don't need to do this. I promise. No. Don't do this. I don't understand a lot of the injectable culture. Like, I don't understand putting botulism in your face. Like, I need a facelift real bad. That is the, that is. I look like a basset hound and my face is trying to get away from me. I'm not putting botulism in my face to fix it because it's fucking botulism. We actively try to avoid poison. Yes! Unless it makes us pretty. There was this whole thing where Gwyneth Paltrow rubs snake venom on her face. And I'm like, that's generally a thing you try to avoid. I'm not putting it on my face. Just this for... Uh, you're, you're making your... You're forcing parts of your body to swell artificially. Does anyone else just smell cancer coming off of this? Because I sure like, the fuck do. You, like there was a thing a few years ago where instead of doing collagen injections and lips, they were shaving level layers of skin off of corpses, rolling them, and implanting that in the lip to plump it permanently. Dead people skin rolled up in your lip. Kiss me, baby. <sighs> No, no. Let's let's get back to our, our more comfortable level for us, which is bizarre to say the least. But um, I cannot I don't understand sports. Never have. I don't think I ever will. But I, I understand, understand what sports. Um. When people's teams win, they get excited. That's cool. I get it. 
and they're happy. I just, I don't understand how this works. I like some baseball. Nebraska fan hurt after hurtling Wisconsin taxi. Nebraska football fan is nursing an injured face after he tried to hurdle a taxi in Madison. Wisconsin State Journal reports 20-year-old Bryce Consbrook of Nebraska was in town to watch the Cornhuskers take on Wisconsin at Camp Randall Saturday afternoon. Police say uh, Consbrook was in downtown Madison around 2 a.m. when he ran into traffic and tried to leap over the taxi. He missed and hurt his face. That is the most gentle way of saying that. He hurt his face. What that means is his face came into contact with asphalt at an alarming rate of speed. Or with the taxi. That's true, too. It doesn't mention whether it was the taxi or the ground. It happened to my cat once. She bounced off the front tire of a car and then into the street. And she smashed her little face in. I'm just, I'm thinking that if your team wins and your first instinct is to run into traffic, you failed natural selection. I mean, I'm a Mets fan. And it's been a long 20 years. I can see just, you know, like temporary insanity taking in at the shock of it. Like, yeah, it's like, oh my God, they won. I can see the Mets winning the World Series and kind of thinking I might be on acid because it's been a long fucking 20 years. So, you know, maybe, maybe, but I don't, I don't know that I'd run into traffic. Into fuck. That, that is the one place that we are schooled as small children never to go. This is drilled into us. It's, it's do not go into traffic. Look both ways before crossing the street. Do not do that. The first fucking, my team won traffic. Oh, they lost. Well, that puts it a little more perspective. Oh, they lost? Well, still, I wouldn't run into traffic. Shit, the Mets lose all the time. You don't run into traffic. Thanks for that. <laughs> I got an open wound in my leg. You want to pour some wine? <laughs> Stand sport. Oh, make fun of your team. Just do not. You know what? This might be the stupid virus. Seriously. Maybe the end is nine. Because stupid it's... virus, robots, penguin fucking. And finally tonight, we have a phenomena that has plagued our show for a long, long time, and we just do not understand it. Now we're going to get to witness it in progress. We may not be able to comprehend what is happening, but we can, for the first time in What the Fuck is Wrong with You history, we can view this phenomena as it's happening through the miracle of technology, otherwise known as We Got Video! Take a look at this, kids. Um, This comes to us from Florida. Of course it does. Of course it does. Everybody take your shot. Where is it? Let's see. <sighs> yeah, I saw just the inhale of breath there that you made. Oh, I'm not pitting play on that video at all. Here we go. This this comes to us from Florida. I have to refresh it to make it work right. But uh, through the miracle of technology, we can witness this phenomena firsthand. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Um... If you watch this guy down here at the uh, lower left-hand side, he is stuffing a chainsaw into his pants. If you watch again carefully, it's slow-mo. Watch the guy behind the counter. This This is not subtle. This is not well planned. This is not... And the guy over there is like, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Come back here! Excuse me, sir. Is that a chainsaw in your pants, or did your sports team have a good night? Please say a man stole a chainsaw by 
by sticking it down his pants. Stop video. I don't need you there. Um, Nothing in a man's pants should ever make that noise. <laughs> no. If your date's pants make those no that noise, go home. Go home. Because uh, so he will destroy your 24-hour tits. Surveillance video from a Treasure Coast lawn equipment in Port St. Lucie. I used to live near there. Good God. Shows the man putting the tool worth more Port than... St. Lucie is where the Mets have their spring training. Just a man putting the tool worth more than $600 down his pants. I love how they say putting the tool down his pants. Guys kind of do that every day already. It's, it's kind of a necessity. Police tell Scripps Treasure Coast newspaper that Anthony Ballard come in asking for a dollar's worth of change. Police say employees chase Ballard, who ditched the tool in a wooded lot. Guys don't do that very often. Uh, the employee called 911 when he saw Ballard... The puns in this thing are amazing. The employee called 911 when he saw Ballard return to look for it. So what he did was he went into the store. He shoved a chainsaw down his pants. Got caught, obviously. That shit was not subtle. Ran outside, threw the chainsaw away, and then came back in the hopes the chainsaw would still be where he threw it and the police would not be there. Maybe they just... Maybe they'll let it go because they couldn't catch me. So I'll just go back and get the chainsaw later. You know, it's cool. Maybe he was hoping it, maybe he was hoping it would cut all that wood for him. On its own. Because clearly he doesn't understand how chainsaws work if he's willing to put one down his pants. Because Seriously. Fuck. That is not a place a chainsaw should ever like, go. You ever see those cop movies where the cop, like, shoves the gun down the front of his pants? Don't do that! Because I'm like, look, I know the safety's on, but shit, shit happens, man. That's why we invented holsters! And, and I'm feeling like that's not a place you want that gun to accidentally go off. That's just me. You, you're... The inside of your scrotum should never be equated with daylight. Not ever! <laughs> not ever! If it is, there's a problem. Yeah, I guess people don't do that piercing, stretching thing with their scrotum, do they? Nothing they good. Ears. If your, if the inside of your scrotum is ever acquainted with light, something has gone horribly wrong in your life. It would, that would seem to indicate that something is amiss. That's, that's just what, that, something's gone wrong. I guess, I guess that's the first thing we learned tonight. Just don't. Don't put, thing, don't put things like that in your pants. We learned this years ago. We've been learned, teaching this lesson over and over again. You'd think that would kind of be a natural selection type thing. You would! You wouldn't think that'd be a thing we'd need to learn. Not to put power tools with sharp bits. Down our pants, near our nooks and crannies. We've learned... Just keep the sharp shit away from your nooks and crannies, people. We've learned that no matter what happens with your sports team, remember what you were taught when you were four and stay the fuck out of traffic. Just stay out of fucking traffic. What about shining a flashlight through your scrotum like you do with your fingers, Mike says. Mike, what are you, are you, are you, is it thin enough for that to work? I know, I know, I have a picture. Them, they're not flat. I now have a picture in my mind of my producer. He's probably doing it right now. With his legs up in his chair and the, the LED on his phone going, what about this, huh? <laughs> You're going to send you, he's going to send you a, a scrotum selfie in a minute. He is. He's going to send us a scrotum selfie. He doesn't have uh. my phone number. He's going to send it to you. I'll send it to you because I like to share. I'll post it on Twitter. Yeah, we'll put Mike Scrotum on Twitter. Totally. Yep. Um, we've learned that you don't have to be human to commit bestiality. Uh, Who knew? Just leave the penguins alone. And the, the worst part is seals are normally such cute animals. 
And we think, oh, it's a seal. It's a seal. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, that's how dolphins get away with being the dude bros of the sea. Maybe there's a reason people want to club baby seals. Have you ever thought of that? Think of the no. penguins. Um, we've learned that, ladies, if he doesn't love you without injecting fucking shit into your tits, not a good relationship to be in. I don't even think it's about the dating aspect of it. I just think if you want bigger tits for a day, you can buy those at Vicky's. Seriously, yeah. I mean, 34 90 fucking 9 Anything that does not involve piercing of flesh. Without anything invasive. It's right. just a fuck ton of foam. And it really does work, I'm mm. here to tell you. And it's totally non-invasive. And then you can use it again. One time price. We've, we've, no surgery. We've learned the robots will take over the minute they figure out how to master curbs. Yeah. And finally tonight, if you hear voices coming from the walls, it may not be ghosts. It may just be some poor dumb would-be burglar trapped in the fucking marshals. I mean, it could go either way. <laughs> it could be the ghost of the burglar that got trapped in there years ago. It could be both. So bring, like, a baseball bat and a shotgun that fires salt rounds, just in case. So, otherwise, a typical Saturday night is what you're saying. Exactly. 